All right, so today we're going to be going over a board that doesn't see the battery. Now, I've already gone over the theory as to the things that will keep the board from running off of the battery or seeing the battery or charging the battery in a previous video. And here I'm going to go over a machine that actually has the issue of it doesn't recognize the battery. That is what it was brought in with. So we'll start from the beginning, and we will start the troubleshooting process. So first things first, let's bring up a schematic for this. So as I've said, the battery speaks to the SMC on a data line created by two resistors. So that's the first thing that we check before anything else. So just to give you a quick recap, if you didn't see the other video, over here you're going to see very poor rendering of a PDF by Windows' default reader. Wow, that's bad. Come on. I don't even get a hand tool. Oh, this is bad. Default interface for Windows PDF reader sucks. So, I talked about what a data line is. So you have the 3.3 volt line of the, of the system here. So you have a 3.4 volt line of the system right over here, and that is going through a resistor. This resistor over here goes between several points. So this is going to be a flat 3.4 volts here. And every time that there's communication, one of these chips, whether the SMC, the battery charger, which is the U7000 chip, or the battery itself, what it's going to do is it's going to send pulses by shorting that 3.4 volts to ground. Every time that 3.4 volts get shorted to ground, what's going to happen is that you're going to see a spike where it goes down to zero. And every time it spikes, you're going to have it go down to zero and then go back up to 3.4 and go down to zero and go back up to 3.4. And the duration of these spikes, how low and high in voltage they go, how far away they are from each other, it, just think of it like Morse code for a very oversimplified way of describing it. It's, it's how these things communicate. So let's see what that looks like on the board. So R5280 and R5281, right? Now, as, as usual, as I've said in the past, the board view will always open differently than it does on the schematic. I mean, the board view will always open in a different direction than the board is actually facing you on the desk. That's just how this works. So as you can see, these are the two resistors. And on one side of the resistor, you have the 3.42 volts. And on the other side of it, you have this data line, which is SMBUS underscore SMC underscore 5 underscore G3 underscore SDA and SMBUS underscore SMC underscore 5 underscore G3 underscore SCL. So let's look on the board and see what those look like. And let's try and measure them. Let's see if we actually get pulses. So this is one of the areas where the oscilloscope comes in handy, because with the oscilloscope, I will just be able to see it. And what do you know? One of the resistors is not there. This is commonly caused when people take things apart to fix it themselves. They were probably trying to replace the battery connector on this machine, and this is what happened to it. So let's see what this looks like. So this is the battery indicator. Looks like shit. So, well, somebody was probably checking that. What happened is probably their nail went down here, and the nail just went dink and ripped that resistor off the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reattach that resistor. I'm going to take it off of another board, and after I take it off of another board and put it on there, we're going to see if we have pulsing, and we're going to see if the battery works and if the battery charges. So first things first is to turn on my fume extraction system because I have no plans of getting cancer from soldering. See the battery indicator connector has seen better days as well. Might as well measure that resistor while I'm here. So I'm gonna put the multimeter here in resistance mode. The multimeter in resistance mode, we're gonna put the probes there. So out of the two kilo ohms that's supposed to be, that is exactly two kilo ohms. Well, I argue with success. Now, let's get some solder. I know. I know. You guys hate when I say solder. Solder. Instead of solder. I, I can't say solder. It just sounds like such a terrible word. I've so the pads are not really looking very nice. So what I do is I just keep moving back and forth with the iron. This solder has some flux inside of it. That's right. I said solder. I said it again. Solder. I was born in Staten Island, you can't... Okay, so that pad is nasty, so we're just going to rub a little more. Let's try to get that pad to reappear, shall we? The temperature is not too high on this, we're at 740. Come on. Come on. Oh, we're getting somewhere. Scrape it a little bit without destroying it. And send some new in there. Are we getting anywhere?
Barely. Damn. Hmm. All right. This is going to take a little bit of cleaning. You know what I like about the new setup is there's no split for you, so you can see that I just dropped uh, this into the, the alcohol. One of them. I usually don't like Q-tips because they leave crap on the board unless you're really, really good at your at, at rotating it as you go so that it doesn't leave junk on the board. Because if you don't, then the, the stuff comes off. My brush is in the other room. I should have just got up and got the brush. The reason I'm not—I don't really care too much about this—is because uh, for these types of repairs, it, this is going to get taken out when it's done and cleaned and put in the ultrasonic anyway, and then brushed. So there is a cleaning stage. So wasting time in that kind of stuff and the diagnosis and trying to fix it stages—it brings no returns. I'm just going to try to scratch away until we get a pad here, something that we can actually solder to. Get hot. Come out of sleep, you little. There we go. That's not the important one anyway, because the that side is not coming off at the, to the data line. Keep in mind these resistors both come from PP3V4 to G3 hot, and on the other side of them are separate data lines. So if I really needed to, I could just solder a resistor from there to there, and be fine. I'm just being anal retentive about it for no reason, which is a bad habit. You know how many times I've gone to take something that per works perfectly and make it a little more perfect only for it to just never work again for no reason and no sense? I don't know why either, but it's enough times that I should have learned my lesson by now to stop doing it. Okay, so my good tweezers are not on my desk. Oh, oh here we go. Good tweezers are on the desk. So I'm going to take that resistor off of the other board, which you're not going to see because I'm not using a microscope for that. Take that resistor, and we are going to fit it on here and do our best to not melt the battery indicator connector. This is where soldering tweezers are coming very, very handy. I just don't have any because I don't work on cell phone boards where they're most often necessary and required. All right. You didn't see that. So one of those times where I really wish I had it in me to edit the mistakes out. I just don't because it's so important to me that you get the message that even idiots can do this that I feel compelled to show you all of the dumb things that I do. So you saw that in attempting to actually make it sit on there nicely, I melted the resistor right off of the board. I mean, that, that was literally a done, done fine job that would have worked. It would have never come back for years and years and years and, but no wasn't good enough. I just had, a, had to be an idiot and do that little thing to try to make it a little better. And uh, It's just not a good habit. Yeah. All right. One of the things I really could have done was cover that battery indicator connector in captain tape. But something tells me, and call me crazy here, but something tells me based on that and that that I'm going to wind up replacing that thing anyway. So if I'm going to be replacing it, I don't really care if I burn it. You know, because that old connector is most likely going to get thrown in the, in the garbage.
That's not straight. I know. Make fun. Looks like it had too much Jägermeister. Okay, here we go to the fun part. Let's see if this actually works. So we get a battery. This is an A1286 battery for a 2011 and 12 machine, but it will still work just fine. This, the only difference here is added capacity. Okay, so the fan is spinning, which as I like to joke very often means that the board is done. So we have a fan spinning. So usually when it doesn't recognize the battery, it won't turn off from the battery at all. So the fact that it turns on is good. What I'm gonna be looking for next is that it actually recognizes the percentage of the battery. And let's do that here. So that you, as I always say, I want to show you that the stuff that gets done here actually works. If what I do does not work, you should not listen to me. You, you should stop listening to me the moment I start showing you things that don't actually work. All right, I'm going to put it on the desk here, and as usual, I'm going to zoom out of the name of the person because I'm sick and tired of people doing creepy shit. Like, look, I actually had once one person. I had a video that I had a, I uploaded that I had to delete, where it, they saw the name of the person, they contacted them on Facebook. They said, hey, look, this dude did a video fixing your board, but he kept sending the, the message about, you know, five or ten times a day. Look at how cool you are. There's a video on it. Look at how cool you are. There's a video on it. It was just, just sick shit. So I learned my lesson on there. I don't show the usernames of anything anymore. So the board recognizes a charger. It works and runs off of the battery. Now let's just sit here and see if this actually charges. I'm probably going to hit fast forward in a plug-in in Sony Vegas here because I'm going to run out of patience. Okay, we're at 88%. Now, what I'm also going to do here is I want to see the communication between the SMC and the battery. I want to actually show that to you on my oscilloscope. So to do that, I'm going to have to face the camera towards the oscilloscope and manually focus that in. So let's see, so oscilloscope is... Eh? Good tripod. Okay, we're gonna turn that thing on. That's good enough. All right, now... What would my desk be without a mess of wires? So it's set to one volt, which is good because this is 3.4 volt spikes. Uh, you probably can't see this because of the lighting, but there is a, it is a line here, a line here, a line here, and a line at the top. So I want to be able to see all the way up to four volts on my screen. That's pulsing. Now V top is 3.38 to four, uh, which is pretty much what I expect. You can see I'm not really holding my hand steady where I'm supposed to. Oh well, I know it's time to get new probes. Well, at one point you saw the 3.4 volts, and you saw the square, and that's pretty much what it was I was looking for. So at least I know now after this I get to go online and spend 50, 100 bucks on new probes for the oscilloscope. Boo. The dinky probe that comes with this is such a piece of crap, so I was expecting to have to do that sometime soon. Anyway, so there you go. The board itself works. It charges the battery. It runs off of the battery. Uh, you got to see the troubleshooting process. You got to see the repair of it. You got to see that it worked. So this was kind of an easy one, so I guess it's kind of boring. Um, some boards are damaged by water. Some boards are damaged where you spill something on it and it corrodes it. Some boards are damaged by... Uh, idiots, so somebody pries at something and they rip things off, and on rare occasion you have something like this where the board is damaged by both. Either way, it was a fairly simple fix.